Welcome, welcome, welcome. Mario Michel here. Today's topic is Spiritual Influences in the Mind, part number four. So we've been looking at this chapter, chapter four, and um, we're going to get right into it right now. So for, for today, we're going we're gonna to start with the victory may be gained. And let me just uh, adjust the camera real quick. Now, what we're going to do is, we're going to go with uh, the, the, the parts. I'm not going to mention all the parts we're going to be looking at, but as we go, we're going to see what we're going to look at. So, let's get right into it right now. And today we're going to start with the victory may be gained. And let me see for the moment that there are many, many people out there preaching that that you cannot get victory over sin. But we know for sure that only God gives us the victory over sin. If you try by, by yourself, then you have no success. Only God can help you with that part. So, through the cultivation of righteous principles, men may gain the victory over the bias to evil. If he is obedient to the law of God, the senses are no longer warped and twisted, the faculties are no longer perverted and wasted by being exercised on objects that are of a character to lead away from God. In and through the grace bestowed by heaven, the words, the thoughts, and the energies may be purified. A new character may be formed and the debasement of sin overcome. That's from manuscript 60, 1905. And so we basically what we know is that uh, is that the 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 victory is not for those that already won it's for those that are struggling to win because of course satan always tries to to put you down if you are if satan doesn't tempt you then we can you can know that something is wrong yeah, because Satan would not waste his time tempting those that he already has under his grip. Okay? He will basically tempt those that he cannot get his grip upon. Because he's trying to get as many as possible. So, what we do is, what we do is, we, 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 we assume that um, because we are sinners, then we just need to keep sinning. But that's not the case, and that's not what the Bible actually teaches. Um, and right now, let me say this: um, it, there, it, it is very beautiful outside right now because it's white, it's snowing. Yes, it's a good day. Um, maybe I'll give you guys uh, to take a look. If you can see it, I don't know. I'm gonna try. To see if you guys can see it as you can see right here you can see the snow on the floor and actually there is still more coming you can see over there it's pretty white outside is pretty white yes so there is a um, snow yes so i wanted to share with you guys this good news because it hasn't been snowing like this for a long time it kind of snows almost every year, but like this, this amount of snow, I think it's been about about 10 years. So it's pretty good. And I'm of course, I'm going to go outside later on to play in the snow. 
and I'll probably make some live videos of me doing that too. So stay tuned on my Facebook. Um, on yes, on my Facebook profile, you might see me being live on Facebook doing that. Now let's go back to the story again. Uh, what I was saying is that most of us we we don't we don't realize that uh, sin is that victory over sin is possible, but it is possible. And if we do the right thing, if we do what God asks us to do, then we will for sure get the victory over sin. Let's move on. Uh, wavering mind, beginning of temptation. And what that means is people who don't who don't make a stand, that's where it starts. So when you make a stand, that's when you, that's when you stop basically sinning. So the beginning of yielding to temptation is in the sin of permitting the mind to waver, to be inconsistent in your trust in God. The wicked one is ever watching for a chance to misrepresent God and to attract the mind to that which is forbidden. If he can, he will fasten the mind upon the things of the world. He would endeavor to excite the emotions, to arouse the passions, to fasten the affections on that which is not for good, for your good. But it is for you to hold every emotion and passion under control in calm suggestion, in calm subject, subjection to reason and conscience. Then Satan loses, loses his power to control the mind. The work to which Christ calls us is to the work of progressive conquest over spiritual evil in our characters. Natural tendencies are to be are to be overcome, appetite and passion must be conquered, and the will must be placed wholly on the side of God of Christ. Review and Herald John fourteen eighteen ninety two. Basically, what that means is, uh, let me just show that right here. It's a progressive conquest over spiritual evil. So this is not a one-time deal. It's not that you just, you know, people always talk about you've been baptized, you've been saved. And then once you've been saved, you're always going to be saved? No. Um, it's actually still snowing. So, that's good. Uh, no, it, it, is a, it is a continual... It is a continual uh, progress. You don't just stop. You keep continuing until Christ comes and deliver you, delivers you forever from Satan. Which is at his second coming. Until then, it is a daily walk. A daily you have to be willing to submit to God and resist the devil. That's in James chapter 4 verse 7. So first step, submit to yourself to God. Second step, resist the devil. And then he will flee from you. So that's how it works. You don't just stop and, and think of it that way. It's like your company... And you are making progress on the product that you're making. If you stop making progress, somebody else is going to come and and take it from you. If you remember back in the days when we used to have films, you know, I think it was, um, was it Sony? Where you had to, this like a black, it's pretty small, like this big kind of long that give that shows you the pictures and that if we take a when we take a photo it gives you like something like this small pretty long and for a long time they were the one dominating the market until we we turn into and they never progressed because they thought well we got everything under control and then another company came and they went digital and now basically they took over the, the, the camera and the, the, the photography and the, and all these things. 
So you need to keep uh, stabilizing business. You need to keep moving forward and progressing, getting better. Same with the spiritual life. You need to keep getting better. So let's move on to, okay. Not need despair because of inherited tendencies. So when we were talking about tendencies earlier, it is not a good one. Because if you have the good ones, then it's already good. It's the bad ones that you want to press down. You want to um, push them away. Because that is not what God wants you to become in life. Yeah, don't forget Satan is always trying, always there trying to help you, not help you, force you to bring out the bad ones. But God is like, no, the bad ones, leave them away because that will not get you anywhere good. So, Satan is ever on the alert to deceive and mislead. He is using every enchantment to allure men into the broad road of disobedience. He is working to confuse the senses with erroneous sentiments and remove the landmarks by placing his false encryption on the signpost which God has established to point the right way. It is because these evil agencies are striving to eclipse every ray of light from the soul that heavenly beings are appointed to do their work of ministry to guide nope let me reread that it is because these evil agencies are striving to eclipse every ray of light from the soul that heavenly beings are appointed to do their work of ministry to guide guard and control those who shall be heirs of salvation. Of salvation. None need despair because of the inherited tendencies to evil, but when the Spirit of God convicts of sin, the wrongdoer must repent and confess and forsake the evil. Faithful sentinels are in guard to direct souls in right path or on guard. Faithful sentinels are on guard to direct souls in right path. Manuscript 8, 1900. Well, so like, as I mentioned earlier, that's what we get. Uh, we get so when you think about it, the when you think about it, the tendencies that we have, we have both good and bad tendencies when we were born. Mm. What God wants to do is He wants to remove the bad ones because the bad ones they will get you in trouble. The good ones, I mean, you know, you, you, you see, there's never any law written for anything good. You don't see a law that says to love everybody, to be patient, to be long-suffering, to be kind. There's no law that like that. You see laws that are written against hatred, against um, racism, against uh, killing or murdering, against bad things, basically. Not the good things, but the good things... You, can, you need to keep them. The bad things, that's what you need to, to move away from. So, uh, that's basically what it, was, what, was, what, it, what it boils down to. We're going to finish with that last one because I'm trying to keep it under 20 minutes. So, we're going to finish with partaker of sin through associations. And, what I, what I, what, and I'm going to just say that the title for this part already explains that when you're an accomplice, you know, um, when you're an accomplice, when you, if they come to arrest someone and you are there, even if you didn't do anything, you also get caught up into it because you are associating with that person or with that event. So that's what, that's what that title actually means. Now, 
the soul that has been misled by wrong influences and has become a partaker of sin through association with others to do contrary to the mind and character of God need not despair. For such an high priest became us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. Christ is not only priest and intercessor for our sins, but the offering. He offered himself once and for all. Letter 11, 1897. So, what do we have here? Um, we have a basically a scenario. The scenario is by associating with um, people that do bad things, we also become that. One thing that says is, tell me, um, tell me who your friends are, and I'll tell you who you are. Yes, that's that basically association right here. So if your friends are murderers, adulterers, fornicators, and you get the point, then you become molded into that. So, what do we do then? Um, what we do is, we, one, we submit to God, two, we resist the devil, and three, then he will leave us alone. But when you submit to God, he will want you to get away from some people, get away from some habits, get away from some environment, get away from some uh, anything that is bad that you like. Because that's how you need to submit to God, to let Him take control. Resist the devil means when He comes with temptation, just say no. Go and run to God and help Him, ask Him to protect you. And when you are behind God, Satan cannot come to you because He has to come through God first, which He can do that. So that's the idea in so far in those four parts we just looked at. When we, when we see part number five, we're going to see more and possibly even deeper things that are needed in this progressive conquest over sin and over Satan. So, this was Mario Michel. I hope, thank you guys for watching. I hope to see you again. But if I don't see you again, I hope to see you again when Jesus Christ comes the second time. Until then, bye for now. Now you're out.